Hi, I'm Mike Ruane of Revelation Software, and today we'd like to talk about Open Insight 9.2.1 and our Source Code Management, SCM. Source Code Management has been built into Open Insight versions 9.2.1 and above. Uh, you turn it on in the database in the environment settings that we have there. Most of the work is handled as you would expect inside of the system editor and we have integrated this tool with our deployment tools so that you can actually use it to manage the way that you work with your software. Uh, this is version 1.0 of our source code management. We expect to have a number of enhancements and we expect them all to be backwards compatible. Uh, we appreciate your ideas and your suggestions and let's get on with the demo. So turning on the source code management for use and then using it within Open Insight is really quite simple. The first thing we have to do is actually turn it on in the environment settings. So if we go into Application Tools and we go into Database Manager, underneath the Database tab, under Environment Settings, on this General tab, we have a new group box here called Source Code Management. And by checking on this box that we are turning on Source Code Management, this lets certain parts of the system start to track the changes to the software for us. So we'll click on OK and then we're good to go. So just a reminder how to turn it on underneath Application Tools in the Database Manager, our Database and Environment Settings. We just make sure that the Source Code Management checkbox has been checked. Okay, so now we actually go into the editor and see how this works. So we'll go into Application Tools and we'll go into the System Editor and here I'll create a brand new stored procedure. So I'll call this uh, subroutine AAA. I'll pass a null parameter to it. And I'll make a couple of lines. I'll say A equals 1, B equals 2, put a little comment Mike was here, and we'll press F9 to compile this. It's going to ask us for the name of the stored procedure. We'll click on OK. And there we go. So it's compiling, compilation was successful, we have a time and date stamp. Now let's make some changes here. Let's make a, a new new comment. Let's say that uh, D C equals 12. Let's say that you know D equals C plus A. Uh, F9, we'll keep saving it. Um, we'll put in a little under utilities. We'll put in a code template for uh, an open file. And we'll open the file called uh, VOC. Click on OK. I'll press F9 to compile it. We have a, ver a possible unassigned variable for true, so we'll go back and we'll set this to 1. I'll press F9 to compile it again. So pretty much what you would, a normal developer would be doing over the course of writing a program. But now if I go up to SCM and I go into the SCM panel, I'll see that we have four instances of this program being saved. So there's four times we press the compile key that it was different from the time before. And by clicking on any one of these, so here's the first version of the program, just a couple of lines when we saved it. And then I'll click on here again, there's the second version of it. New comments, new lines there. I'll, turn, I'll deselect that one. I'll select this one, and here the program is getting bigger. And here you can see there's a difference there. So when I select any one line, it'll show me the source code in this preview pane below. When I have two rows selected, so two versions of the program, you'll see that the compare button becomes enabled for us. So I'll click on the compare button. Okay, so the first thing I'll do here is resize this so that we can actually see it in the screen. Okay, so we can see we have the old version of the program and the new version of the program and you can see that we have some differences here between the two. I'll just click on the compare button so everything stretches out for us. So you'll see that we have a new comment here, we have some colors here, some lines are spaced here. So first off, if we go to our options, we'll see that we're going to synchronize the list scrolling so that if these programs actually extended beyond the length of this panel, if we scroll down both programs, this one and this one, would scroll at the same time. We could also auto-synchronize the first difference, which we could do as well, or we can only show the difference, although that gets confusing sometimes. Underneath color settings, we can choose our colors for the colors found in the original code, not in the new code, for items found in the new code, not in the old, or for code lines used for spacing, because we're going to have spacing here so the things stretch out. So you can actually see that this line is different from there, uh, that we've spaced out these. This used to be line 6, now it's on line 12. 
So it actually makes a pretty good visual tool for seeing what is different between one version of the program and the other version. Okay, so we're done with this and I'll just close it down. Um, so I've compared those two. Now if I have too many versions of this, if I've over the course of a day I've modified 15 or 16 and compiled it that many times, I can simply highlight all the ones that I don't want there and say delete the, delete the selected rows. And that's going to re remove these from the database. We actually have tables behind the scenes that are tracking all these changes. And this will actually delete those records from there. And I'll say yes I really do want to delete it. So we just have the one left there. So I'll click on close. Now some other choices that we have underneath the SCM menu are our versioning. Uh, we're not quite sure what we're going to do with the versioning yet except for the fact that it can be used as an internal tool by the developers. We've built this toolkit in such a way that it's a solid framework for any sort of addition and enhancements we want to make to it as the years go by. So I'm going to say let's look at all the store procedures that have changed since and let's say uh, 1330 today. Program selecting out there going against the repository and we can see that only one program AA was modified. I'm going to give this a new version of 1.0. I'm going to click on OK to assign it and now it's been assigned. So behind the scenes there's information about this program with this uh, time and date stamp in its unique MD5 hash that it's now tagged as version 1.0. Let's close down this screen. Underneath SCM and I go into modules. <clears throat> this is similar to the other one in that I can find all the programs that have changed since a certain time and I'll list them all there. And then I can take these programs and add them to a particular module. So if I have a module down here, uh, for example called SCM, and you'll see that our SCM module has all these different components that are tied into it. Uh, I can click on that and click on Add to Module. And it will appear, it's now down here in this module. We just need a scroll bar, don't we, somewhere. There it is. AA has been put into the list. And we can see that it's version 1.0. Now we add the source code to a module. The object code is going to be uh, assigned automatically. But this really shouldn't be in this module. So I'm going to highlight this one. I'm going to say remove it from the module. And now it's out of there. Now the modules can be used. Uh, in the RDK. So that when you deploy an application or parts of an application, you can actually deploy an entire module. So if I was to cancel from here, uh, and I, I'll close down the editor for right now. So if I go over to the RDK, and I'll need to shrink this down some so it fits into the, vid into the area for the screen. Like that. I'm going to create a new repository view. I'll take all the entities that are in a particular module and then I'll take the module of SCM and I'll click on OK. This is now going to go out to the repository and find out all the, inf all the entities that exist in the SCM module. And it's going to populate this list for us right here. So you'll see that I brought over the store procedure and the store procedure executables. So the object code and the source code for this module. And just click on this button, it moves all over to there. Then I can deploy it as I need to. Now right now the source code management only applies to source code, as the name is implied. However, the idea of modules will generally be expanded eventually into all the components of Open Insight. So let's close down this right now. I'm not going to save the changes. Application tool will go back to the system editor. And you'll see that AAA is already open because it remembers my preferences from the last time I was in here. I get the SCM. Um, I can do the difference, and this will prompt us to pick the difference between one program and the other program. And here you can see a list of how the key is defined. That we have the actual name of the program, the application it belongs to, we have a time and date stamp, and then an MD5 hash of the unique version of this program. <coughs> With SCM, if we go to version master screen and look at the program of AAA, AAA, uh, you'll see that we have the time and date stamps in there, uh, what version number it is, uh, when it was modified last. So while we are limited on the time that we can actually devote to this demonstration, hopefully we've given you a pretty cogent overview of how to use source code management within Open Insight. We thank you for your attention. 
uh, if there are any questions or comments you have, or if you just like to find out more about Revelation software in general, please visit our website at www.revelation.com. And thanks very much for your attention.